The Kingdom Keepers met up again at the base of Escher's Keep, a confusing maze of interlocking staircases, mirrors, and doors that crawled up the inside of Cinderella Castle. It had been built years ago as an attraction, but never opened to the public, as it had been proved too dangerous. One misstep and you were dumped into chutes or slides, some of which landed you in the castle's moat. I tried to tell a cast member about the balloon, but he thought I was my DHI playing some sort of trick on him. I shook him and he said, amazing technology, that feels so real. What a jerk. I tried to point out the balloon, but with the clouds, you can't even see the string or wire or whatever. We've got to get up there, Maleficent or not. But what if Amanda was trying to warn us? Wouldn't that mean we might be walking into a trap? She's got a point. Finn quickly reorganized them. He and Phillipe would ascend Eshra's keep to the apartment. Maybeck and Willow would try to find Amanda and Jez, while Charlene stood sentry on the path to Fantasyland, giving Phillipe and Finn eyes on the castle from the outside. They said their goodbyes, Maybeck uncharacteristically wishing them luck, his dark troubled eyes expressing concern. They agreed to meet after the fireworks in front of Cinderella's golden carousel, immediately behind the castle. And if you guys don't show up? Thankfully, Maybeck dragged her out the door and into the castle's gift shop storage room before Finn had to think of something plucky to say. You okay with this? Phillipe was visibly nervous, his foot on the first step of Eshra's keep. It was a routine that had to be memorized, and neither boy had attempted to climb it in several months. Let's do it. He faced four doors, all in different colors. They formed a semicircle on a small platform of polished tiles. He and Phillipe were 15 feet above the ground floor. Having ascended the first staircase correctly, skipping every other tread. Phillipe stepped aside, allowing Finn to lead the way. It was no picnic. Sometimes stairs led nowhere. A single misstep would mean falling down a slide to the ground floor or into the moat. The route up to an elevator that accessed the penthouse apartment included invisible bridges, upside down staircases, and trap doors. The illusions were the result of mirrors, projectors, and trick lighting their combined effect overpowering. Do you remember the way? He faced four doors, all in different colors. They formed a semicircle on a small platform of polished tiles. He and Phillipe were 15 feet above the ground floor, having ascended the first staircase correctly, skipping every other tread. I want to say second from the right, blue, but it's your call, man. Turning the wrong door handle caused a trap door to open. Phillipe stayed off the platform in case Finn chose incorrectly. The plan was to take turns until they got it right. Finn tried the blue door and the four fell out from under him. Down down he raced the slick slide, spinning him in tight coils before throwing him out onto the floor. He headed to the slanted stairs and began climbing again. Phillipe tried the yellow door. The trap door opened beneath him. Green, go for, seemed too simple of choice. So on Finn's next attempt, he tried the purple door and it opened. Purple. Finn called down to Phillipe, who was gingerly skipping steps as he made his way up the slanted staircase. Once through the purple door, Finn started across an invisible bridge, an effect so convincing he would have sworn there was nothing beneath his feet. He moved across it in tiny steps, just barely sliding each running shoe forward, making sure something solid was beneath it. Phillipe behind him took the novel approach of getting down on hands and knees and breathing low onto what turned out to be glass, then following the orbs of fog. It's a mirror. Phillipe snuck behind the slower fin. The trick was compounded by the fact that a false destination, a second purple door, was projected at the other end of the invisible bridge, making Finn want to head in that direction. 
In fact, at its midpoint, the bridge veered right, arriving at what looked like a solid wall, which wasn't solid at all. The two boys ended up on a second, small platform. I remember this part. This is where we go down the stairs in order to go back up. Are you sure? Finn tested the up staircase. It was real. He thought Philippi had it wrong, but Philippi waved his hand right across the steps above this first step, and then punched his hand right through the illusion. The stair stopped mid-flight, nothing but a projected image. He led the way down a staircase and then back up a longer staircase, which would make it appear to anyone standing below as though the boys were walking upside down. You two, come down from there. Finn caught the sight of an upside down cast member. He was dressed as a barbershop singer in white pants, a red and white striped shirt, and a straw hat. A Dapper Dan cast member. Security, I faced Dapper Dans just like him that time Amanda and I were taking pictures of everyone's DHIs. They were trying to catch me. You are not permitted in this area. Come down here at once. I don't think we should trust him. They reached a third platform and ducked behind a false wall with two windows. You think he'll come after us? Thunder cracked high above them. I think there's something going on here. The weather balloon, the monkeys, Amanda and Jez showing up for the first time in forever. And personally, I don't trust anyone dressed up like he's selling fried chicken. He could be anybody. That's an easy costume to fake. So, we're ignoring him. Another crack of thunder. It was getting close. Outrun him is probably more like it. And if we're caught? You ever read those contracts we signed? They'll remove our DHIs from the server. They'll replace us with other kids. We'll no longer be Disney hosts. No longer have gold fast passes. We'll lose it all. All that for some weird balloon. You sure it's worth it? You're the one who saw it, not me. Listen, I'm not sure of anything. You want to head down? I'm not going to stop you or anything. But I'm going after that balloon. Security or no security. Amanda was pointing at the castle, and that's good enough for me. How could she possibly know anything about it? How can we possibly go to sleep at night and wake up as DHIs inside the park? When was the last time any of this made sense? Philippi pursed his lips and nodded. Yeah, okay, you're right. If they toss us, so what? We go down fighting. Exactly. Finn peered around the edge of the wall. What do you see? The man in the straw hat was gone. I think he's coming after us. Maybeck ducked instinctively as the sky flashed and only moments later, thunder boomed and rolled in a series of long, endless echoes. A few early raindrops splatted in huge globs onto the footpath, and the air smelled dusty and sweet. Ozone foretelling the electrical charge it carried. Charlene stiffened with the crack of thunder. I do not like lightning. The park guests scattered for cover, quickly emptying the paths. Then forget what Finn said and come with me. The parade path blocked Jazz and Amanda from coming over the bridge. They'll probably head past the haunted mansion and through Fantasyland to reach the castle. We're going this way. To cut them off. Maybeck, you go around past the mansion. Hopefully one of us finds them before we meet up somewhere near Peter Pan. See you in a minute. It's hard to see much, so pay attention. The swirling clouds had brought an early darkness. Never fret. Ah, is like a hawk. What about the monkeys? What if that was some kind of omen? What about the monkeys? What if that was some kind of omen? They split up, Willa dragging Charlene by the arm. Maybeck jogged off. Park guests waved at Willa and Charlene. Some braved the increasingly steady rain to chase after them, calling for autographs. Willa pressed on. We're getting wet! That's what usually happens with rain. We can't get wet. DHIs don't get wet. The rain runs through them. We can't disappoint kids like that. 
Are you worried about the kids? Or your hair? Both, I guess. Okay, so let's run faster. Amanda and Jez ran through the light rain, dodging clusters of guests who determined to stick it out and wait for the fireworks. It's not far now. Jez was a fast runner. It made no sense that she would lag. She seemed to be running at a steady pace. No faster, no slower. No matter what Amanda said or how fast she ran. The rain made the walkway more slippery. Amanda slowed and shortened her strides to avoid falling. When she looked back, Jez was still running at the same pace, the same stride. She apparently had magical footing. She didn't slip. Amanda stopped and turned fully around and stared at her sister. How could she not slip even a little bit? Despite the falling rain, Jez's shirt was dry, her hair perfectly in place. What a princess, Amanda thought. But then she tensed. Jez's feet was landing on the walkway. No splash. Jez? Stop! Answer me, Jez! Amanda cried out, but Jez kept on running forward. The perfect form and posture. The same perfect Jez. Jez finally did stop, though she remained several yards off, like a fearful animal. There was a reason her shirt and hair were both dry. The rain fell through her, hitting the walkway below. Amanda stepped forward, now only inches from her sister. The rain fell harder, soaking her own hair and shoulders, but Jez remained dry. Say something. She reached out her arm and swung it from left to right, cutting her sister in half, her hand passing right through her. A hologram. A DHI. Amanda was finally able to choke out something, drops of water falling down from her cheeks, having nothing to do with the rain. Where's my sister? What have you done to her? 